Hello everyone, we are live. Welcome back to the workbench. Oh, my camera's a bit low today, isn't it? Let's just adjust that quickly before we start. Hello Alex, how are you? Hello Lily, welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you this fine evening? I hope everyone is well and has had a great Easter. I have remembered to mute everything today so we're not going to get any feedback. Can everyone hear me? I notice you're not responding to me. Let's get these parts out and type a message. Ah. That would explain it, Alex, yes. Welcome. I was just about to type, can you hear me? I'm guessing... Excellent, excellent, excellent. Hello Harry, welcome. I hope everyone has had a great Easter. I'm looking at my chocolate and thinking, yeah, it's been pretty good. Let's get on with some carriage building. A diagram 44 third class. As it happens. See, I did my research this week and know what I'm building. Has to happen occasionally. So again, this is one of Linny's fabulous kits. As you will hopefully remember, last week we built the chassis. Which I have not touched since. I have not even fitted the couplings back into it. But it is now, after being given time to dry, plenty strong enough for everything. As I said last week, if you give it time to dry between stages, it is a very nice, strong, easy build. Of course, I don't have the luxury of giving it time to dry because I'm building it live for you. So this week we're going to get started on the body, which again, Linny has designed these kits brilliantly. They are wonderful to build. I do not actually have my built one over here at the workbench with me, so you're not going to get to see that this week. So I'm going to have to build this one for you to see. Let's begin. Something on the workbench there. Let's just... That'll be some remnants from something else I've been working on this week, which shall be revealed later in the week. So these sides just have four tabs holding them onto the sprue. We're going to take them off and file them down nicely. Yeah, my, my like button looks to be in only one piece at the moment. It'd be great if it, it got smashed to pieces. You'll also notice my chair isn't quite so squeaky this week. I have, in fact, fixed that. It came apart and had some repairs done to it through the week. So hopefully that should make the stream a little nicer. So we're just going to start with one of them and one overlay for it which is again just held on to the sprue with four tabs definitely didn't drop it that's not a thing that happened Oh, 
I have not got a link up to Linny's site in the description yet. That is something I was going to add, but I may actually have fallen asleep and only woken up about 20 minutes ago. However, what I do have in there is a link to my new website I'm working on. The downloads page for that has now been finished and so does contain the drawings for the brake van we built. Along with the track plans for my layouts that so far have track plans. They are in any rail format, they are there, anyone can grab them and have a look. I will be adding a links page and on that I will add links to any manufacturers whose parts we use. Yeah, I did think that, Linny, but it works on the thicker sides quite nicely. Oh, I tend to trim too much with a knife. I will give it a go for these for this last one here though. Good thing about having the manufacturer in chat. No, I still can't do it. It's close enough. Excellent, thank you, Alex. I'm glad you approve. Yes, the, the website currently has the home page layouts overview page so none of the layouts have their own specific pages yet but if you click where it says layouts and don't actually select any of them you do get an overview page that gives a basic overview of all my layouts the downloads page has the downloads I think that's all I've got around to doing so far hello Ian welcome I need to have a word with you about transfers at some point in the near future. And some kits actually that I will want to build on this stream. So yes, we definitely need to have a word at some point. I've been meaning to contact you for a couple of weeks now. But life gets in the way. This one's too big. I had a smaller one earlier. We'll just go over this one. So Linny's kits are very easy to build. Hello, Alex. Thank you, Ian. So yes, Lin, Lin trying catching up with chat getting nice and busy there I like that Linny's kits are nice and easy to build PVA glue is all we use neat PVA is recommended to prevent the card from warping I do usually use a slightly thicker brush than this but I can't think where I've left it between course about PVA is it glue is how it dries you can just slather it over everything. Excellent, Ian. Good to hear they are going off for printing. Um, well, whilst you're here, Ian, as a question I was going to ask you, do you produce or do you know someone who does... Brighton, um, oh I know what I'm trying to, illiterate marks, because I can't find them, for, I've got a lavender grey brake van that I want, I've started putting transfers on but I can't find any, anyone does illiterate marks. Along with many other things I need.
I need some Terrier names as well. I know you've got names because you had them at the Upfield show last year. Yes, you can indeed use spray mount as Lenny says. Again, I'm going to remind I'm teaching for the beginner here. Oh, that's very interesting sounding, Ian. Very interesting. And so, just like that, we have a very nice carriage side. That is really how easy this is. And so, whilst we're at it, we're going to get the other one. And we're going to use Linny's suggested method of using the knife. Fair enough, excellent, thank you Ian. I will definitely be after some of them. I've got a couple of terriers I need to rename. It's a shame the names weren't working well, but if you do, um, if you are doing the lettering, you know, at some point it'd be great. I'm in no hurry for it, but I've got a couple I want to do. This is starting to bub already, so onto the glass to weight it down for it to dry. Again, we're going to try Linny's method here. And in fact, that is taking them off this quite nicely. So again, all these need plastering with PVA, or as Linny says, once you get better at it, spray mount. But I'm here to teach them, to show how easy it can be for beginners as well as more advanced builders. So we will stick with the easier methods. So I actually have a quarter inch brush that I normally use for doing these. But I've no idea where it's gone, I had it earlier. Of course the good thing about PVA is I can just wash it off the brush later. And so, just like that, a second side done. It really is that quick and that easy. I'm going to put this one under the glass too. Hello Red, how are you? Welcome to the stream. I hope everyone has had 
a great day. And I hope we are all enjoying so far. So once we've got the sides done, next thing, logically, is to work on the ends. I'm just going to grab my duster down and wipe up some of the excess glue. The duster now has a hole in its corner so I can hang it up on my, in the corner here. Things are going well so far, Red. Yes, thank you. I'm glad you are well. So, for the ends, all of the parts on the thicker sheet are identical. Two notches holding them onto the sprue, and they, these are the right size to sit inside the ends. I'll show you the sheet up close here. As so you can see, we've got slight overhang for the roof each side, so they sit just inside the ends. For the ones that go on the actual ends, rather than the dividers that the rest of them are, we have first an overlay that is full size. It does not have the overhangs for the end. <laughs> I'm glad you've had a good day, Alex. Yes. I am well aware of the IPA smell, Ian. I have had the IPA out quite a few times on previous streams. I have the gallon bottle of it sat next to me now. The smell does get a bit much. I try not to leave it open whenever I can. So we plaster the end with PVA and drop the end overlay onto it. Which then needs lining up correctly. Evening Killian, you are not f late far. It is only 17 minutes in, that's not particularly late. Hello Christopher, how are you? How is everyone? It's good to see so many names here. So you can see with the we have the overlay on now and if we look round behind you can see there is the slight overhang each side bringing this piece out to the full width of the carriage and the sides will sit just inside there. So with that overlay on, we then need the panelling overlay, which I will show you on the sheet here is rather fine because Linny can cut these things quite nicely on the laser. I am quite well on things considered. Christopher, you know what a terrible start to the week I had. So nothing's going to be particularly great, but considering that I'm doing quite well. Yes, I, I believe the panelling strips are about a quarter of a mil wide. Linny can confirm or deny this. But 
But again, it's another one of those things. We take our time, we do it nicely, and it comes out all right. Especially with the instructions up in front of me, because they've got nice big pictures of it all. So having them hung up on my pin board is useful, as it would be for yourselves to have them there. So our panelling overlay goes on. Very gently adjusted into place. And voila, one end piece. Something I am very happy with how well that went and very amazed at the fact Linny has managed them. I don't think there's any risk of that bowing at all, but it can go under there to dry nonetheless. And we will start on the next end. I mean... Now, we can already here look at the advantages of kits such as these by Linny over the scratch building with the brake van when you consider that in our first stream of three hours we... Um, just about got the four sides of the brake van done. We are now 20 minutes into this stream and I'm already on the fourth side. So whilst I enjoy scratch building, this is much, much quicker, much, much easier and at linny prices is far from expensive. So there's definitely advantages to kit building, especially when they're this well designed. Honestly, I, I almost feel like I'm rushing it it's going so fast. So again, as with the other one, the overlay goes on. We cannot see the side from there. We have the slight overhang each side where the end will, where the sides will sit into the end. These are only held in by the top for obvious reasons. So yes, I'm glad carriages were suggested, as I don't think I was going to go straight on to something such as these. Exactly, Alex. Well said.
Linny has done an, an outstanding job on these. So just a bit of gentle adjustment. Because again, it is, if, you, if you're rough with these, you can break them and you will break them. But that's the nature of working with something this fine. But again, I have snapped on my brake carriage that you saw the body of last week. I did snap some of these. However, once they were back in place, they looked absolutely fine. Let's get that duster back down and just wipe up that bit of glue. Keeping a tidy workspace is important, especially with things like glue. A bit of hydration. Very important to stay hydrated, especially on warm nights like tonight. We're going to pop this side, this one out. We're going to pop this one out. Let's have a quick look at this one as well. This one's definitely completely dry. This one is very, very nearly there. So I'm just going to give that a minute under there and then we will continue. I'm going to clear these to the side as we're going to be using my glass sheet again to help form the corners as we did before with the brake van. So I will get the sides, I will glue them and they can sit on the corner using that to maintain the 90 degree. You can get tools for that. But I find it just as easy to use this. Of course, not everyone has a sheet of glass on their workbench, but I would highly recommend it. So we're just going to take our end piece and we're going to run the glue down the inside there. We're not going to do that yet. Because before we do that, we need to form the tumble home on the bottom of the carriages. Remember, just in time. We have a special tool for that. It's called a plastic tube. Or a cardboard tube. Plastic tube, cardboard tube, broom handle. As long as it's round, you're going to get a good curve on it. This one actually came off some bandage for my dog. I don't think I, need, I I'm not going to say anything more about that, but those who know would know. Turn under, fine, yes. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I believe you will find, Linny. I have read the instructions. I very much have read the instructions. Oh, 
I only know the word tumble home because I read it off there. It's one of those words I forget. So I'm just pressing the bottom of the body around my bit of cardboard tube. Indeed, Linny is only human. We cannot complain with kits this excellent that a word could be wrong in the instructions. Mistakes do happen. So, just a short while, pressing that round there. And you can hopefully see now we've got the curve in the bottom of the carriage that actually in this case matches up quite well. Focus please, camera, there we go. Matches up quite well with the curve in the side of the carriage end. This is slightly thicker than a prick stick, but not by much. Good to have suggestions from the creator. No, the instructions definitely aren't in Chinglish. They're very well written. So now we are going to put some glue down in the end this end here and we are going to fit the body the side of the body to the end of the body and then we're going to leave them there we're going to hold them for a minute just to give the glue time to start to stick And then we're going to leave them there. And whilst they set, we're going to form the turn under, not the tumble home as the instructions say, in the second side. Again, I'm just working my way along, pressing the carriage side into my cardboard tube. Do that a few times to make sure the curve is formed nicely. Check it against the end and that sits once again sits beautifully together and have another drink because it is very warm make sure you stay hydrated and so these will form these sides 
So I'm going to run some glue down there. I don't think there's quite enough on the brush anymore. So we just run the glue through this gap again. And we'll place that against this side of the glass. And give that a minute to dry. So this is where Yes, this is where normally you would get up and do something else for a bit whilst the glue dries. As I said, that is not a luxury we have here. We are building live, so we are not going to give them nearly long enough. And we're going to work with any issues we have. <laughs> well said Christopher well said smash that like button and whilst you're there I believe I have a subscribe button and a bell to turn on notifications wow look at me turning into a real youtuber and there's a lot of blue paint here and that is from removing blue paint from a future project and stripping it back down to where it would be if you bought it off eBay. I would say we should have done that on stream, but that involved a lot of time of letting it soak in a bath, and that would have been no fun to do on stream, so you don't get to see 101 ways to strip paint with IPA. It stinks. Excellent, thank you, Ian. All the likes are appreciated. Feed my ego. So I think I have given these long enough for the purposes of stream. And suddenly there was a carriage. Of course, what that carriage needs is glue. Now, that, that's a book you're thinking of, Alex. You give books a good farming. Books. This is the internet. We don't thumb things here. This is the PG internet. We definitely don't fun things here. So we're just going to put some glue down those sides. You can see they're still wobbling apart, but they've not had time to dry properly. You guys building these in your own time and having gone away. will not obviously have this problem of things not being dry that's a me problem I know Linny I am aren't I I'm going to need another project next week luckily I have another project planned and it should take longer than this but all I can say is it's a testament to how good your kits are, Lily, that I am at this stage where 
we're not even an hour in yet, and there is a body. I'm not going to pick it up to show it off because it will fall apart because it's still wet. But there is a carriage body. We're 40 minutes in. I paid £9 for this kit from Linny. And in full, after building this last what, chassis last week, which took about an hour, and then another 40 minutes, we've got the basics of the body built. I have to ask you all, why are you not buying them? Well, I want to see Linny's inbox inundated with requests for kits. Because Linny is incredible at this. As can be seen by these streams. I would also like to remind everyone I am still not sponsored. These are my own views. The fact that Linny is here is irrelevant. Nearly for a whole glass of drink already. Excellent, Pullman Bogue is coming along, good to hear. <sighs> Alex, Alex, Alex. Carriage body, Alex. PG stream. So the next step of these is the compartment dividers. At least I hope it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> so you're all pleading poverty but again this is less than a tenner's worth of kit I have dinners more expensive than that some nights most nights probably but shush For the cost of a Domino's pizza for me and the kids, I could have a rake of these. They really are that cheap. But they build like they're not. Seems more expensive than that, oh, yeah. So you, so, so you see what I'm getting at here. These kits are amazing and they are cheap. And Linny's laser will be up and running again in the near future. At which point I expect everyone to be buying these. No, Alex of Mole, I am aware you're not joking when you say that.
But when your streams do start making money, I expect to see you've bought some kits from Limmy. God, keeping up with chat is hard tonight. If I left it my normal amount of time between looking at chat, you'd all be on to another conversation. So, we've cut out the dividers, we've shaved the ends of them off, and these just slide down into place between the compartments. And as it mentions it on the instructions, I'll mention it here. Three windows per compartment, and these sit down very nicely. And of course they help to stop the body bowing inwards, which is always helpful. And unlike things cut by hand, you can be sure that Linny's sides are all exactly the same height. Your streams will start making money, Alex. We all know that is happening. Mine won't, because they're on YouTube. And I don't, you know, I don't see these as the sort of streams that will bring in the thousand subscribers needed to start making money on YouTube these days. And I am totally okay with that. Your streams, on the other hand, over on Twitter, which you are not far off your targets for being an affiliate. And I know you're not. So don't give me none of that. So of course as I do this I am constantly checking the ones already in there and painting glue on my own hands. Which is wonderful. I'm glad it's PVA and not super glue. Slide them down, adjust them into place, check the previous ones, adjust them back into place. It's a game of constant adjustments, but once they're in, they're in. Your average viewers will get there, Alex. Have no fear. I have every faith in your streams doing extremely well. You have not been doing it long. You are very good at it. And you will hit that affiliate. Have faith. Of course, the biggest problem with these is you, you are just constantly knocking the other ones out of alignment. Yes, Killian, 
I completely agree. I like my streams being small. I wouldn't want to get to those sorts of levels. I, in, you know, this here, sitting here, chatting with you as I'm building, finding out what you're all doing. I, I love it. This is why I'm doing this, is being able to chat to you all, being able to hang out, being able to show people how easy this is. I don't want to be a massive streamer. I don't want to get to those levels. It would bug me if I did. <laughs> but yes, feed my ego and smash the like button. I am going to need to pour another drink of the um, fizzy black liquid that shall not be named, not sponsored, etc. Sugar free, sugar's bad, kids. Hello, Stew Structures. Welcome. Uh, I say you, you talk. You all talk about my southeast accent. There is very few people around here who actually sound like I do. <clears throat> my accent is quite a rare one, but yes. Why sugar bad? It's bad for you. Shouldn't shouldn't have too much sugar. Calories, tooth rot, all that sort of stuff. I gave up having sugar in things a year and a half ago, and I feel great for it. So here we have people. At 50 minutes, a carriage body. Roger, yes, Ian, Roger, Roger does sound quite like me, yes, he does. So we can take the chassis from last week, plonk the body on top. Hey look, here we are after roughly two hours of work with a Stroudley four-wheeler. Linny jokes that I'm going to need a new project for next week. I think I'm going to need a new project for the second half of this stream. We have some slight bowing in this chassis. I'm going to say that's my fault. Let, let's be honest, I know it's my fault. If I'd have allowed it, if we'd have had the extra time to allow it to dry, this would have been what these three laminated layers would have been weighted down whilst they were drying, and it would have been ground using my anvil. However, we didn't have that luxury last week, so there's a slight bow. I'm hopefully going to just correct that slightly without breaking it.
<laughs> I really am starting to lose the chat. It's getting that back busy in there now. This is brilliant. Yes, Harry, the chemicals in this specific drink are just as bad as the sugar, really. I have the sugar-free version of this for the cal the lack of calories. As I'm sure you've noticed in some of my other streams where I've been a bit more on camera, I do need to lose a bit of weight. However, I also don't have sugar in foods. I don't have sugar in my coffee anymore. Sugar in general, I avoid. Uh, you say this, Red, but I bet they do. And also, I don't have a camera. I'm just going to put that out there. I also do not have a camera. I use my phone for this. And most people have phones these days. I don't have a camera. A, cam a camera to the same capability as my phone would be way too expensive. Get rid of that over there because that is now done with. Yes, as Linny says, always worth letting the chassis dry under weights. Of course, I didn't have that luxury last week. I was build because building live. I may well at some point in the future build a new chassis for this specific carriage just to replace this one that is bowed. I'm just going to try teasing it out a bit. It should go. It's only MDF. So it should be okay. Practically there. So it is all correctable. <laughs> Nothing wrong with me. Yes, okay, Alex. Yeah, yeah, my, my, my sugar-free is all part of... It, it was a big dietary change, Harry, about 18 months ago to try and lose some weight. And actually, it has worked. I, I am down on what I was, but I'm still above what I'd like to be. So... We've got a carriage here to build, as well as all this chatting we're doing. Door ventilators are next. Yes, right, that, that's not the sheet with the door ventilators on, this is. That was underneath this one. As... Alex the Mole says, your accent doesn't matter for streaming, it's personality and content. No one cares what you sound like, which is why you will watch me. Now, Lily includes a lot of these ventilators on these sheets. In fact, Lily includes at least double what you need. Linny includes exactly double what you need to allow you to double them up if you so wish. <laughs> no, Lady Alex, you are a wonderful person. You have a wonderful personality and in fact also a wonderful voice. So deal with it. So yes, Linny includes twice these, so you can double them up if you so wish. I do not know if doubling them up is a more correct thickness, but I certainly haven't done it before. You did put it in the instructions that you can put either one or two layers of ventilators on. So, so I don't know whether that's a more realistic thickness or not, so I'll let you answer that one, Linny. Not my mouse picking these up, my screen's really bright again, it's quite off putting. Oh, 
And for those who never heard of spares on No, definitely not. These are absolutely tiny. Spares are always good. So yes, for for those here, as you know, we've sat and had a chat and being able to chat was mentioned. I will throw this out there for future reference for everyone. I generally sit down at the workbench and open up the stream chat on my laptop at some time between 8.30 and 9. If that, no, sorry, 8.30 and 8.45. So I'm always here at least 15 minutes before the stream starts. The chat does work in that time. So if anyone ever wants to come along early and have a chat, I am sitting here quite happy to do that. Right, so it's more realistic, double the thickness. So we're going to give that a go and see how fiddly it is. I'm assuming very, but on my one of these I've done before, I never did it. now upside down these ventilators are slightly curved on one side so it does matter so they go along quite nicely But Harry, if, if you're along early, as I said, I am here early as well. If you want to pop up, say hi, and we can sit and chat until the stream starts. Your being here early and waiting for the start is very much appreciated. There we go, my screen's dimmed back down now, that feels a lot better. It's not putting me off so much. I'm going to have to recharge the paintbrush. Evidently, this is a rather appropriate paintbrush for using for this because I did um, acquire it from Linny when they were down for the Upfield show last October. So, not only are we building one of Linny's kits, we're using one of Linny's paintbrushes. Excellent, thank you guys, much appreciated. And Lady Alex, if you are going to keep forgetting, I'm just going to start putting my um, promotional reminders into the Facebook chat as well.
although that gets quite awkward as we get closer to the stream because of where everything is set up Facebook is not particularly accessible for me I haven't done the glue yet see they were all going too well there I was almost looking like I know what I'm doing <laughs> well it's funny you should say that Alex about Linny narrating behind me we have discussed the idea of doing a joint stream next time Linny is able to make it down this way So perhaps we could do another one of these kits and have Linny read out the instructions. Evening Tom, how are you? Good to have you with us. So now we have ventilators on both sides and we are going to try and double them all up to a more realistic thickness because Linny tells us that's a thing to do That was quite fiddly. I will admit that. You are allowed to jump for joy if you so wish, Alex. So I say it's just been discussions at the moment, nothing solid. If people like that idea, we'll, once Linny is back, we will remind them that we discussed this it won't be for a while yet though i don't believe linny has any plans of being here anytime soon and obviously we would have to discuss what we would actually do on it But yes, I mean, it was actually, the idea was first pitched when I was initially discussing with Linny about doing one of these carriages on a stream. Which was before I started streaming. Still in the planning days, and I discussed this with Linny. Oh, Linny returns. Welcome. Yes, Linny, we, we were discussing about that time me and you spoke about doing a joint stream when you're next down this way. Everyone seems really excited about the idea, so I think we're going to have to do it.
We could do work on the layout together, that would make a good stream. Because, let's face it, that layout's going to be nowhere near finished by the time that you are next down here. And even if it is, you know, if we could work on the big layout, I'm not opposed to that, if need be. Because that will definitely be nowhere near finished. You have a great day too, Stu. Thank you for popping by. It has been much appreciated. I hope to see you again in the future. As for your lag, Tom, I will admit I'm a bit late in saying this even compared to the chat. I have often found that you, in other streams that YouTube has occasionally dropped me behind and no longer live. So it might be worth checking your stream is still actually playing live. So, so yes, we're all excited for the idea of joint streams then. Okay. So this is going extremely well, I'm sure you'd all agree. And again, I just want to point out that all credit for this going well goes to Linny. None of this is my skill. This is all Linny. So congratulations, Linny, on making a great kit that anyone can build and get to a satisfying result very, very quickly. And I must say, everyone, with this double ventilator thing, although, yes, it was very fiddly to start with. As I say, I've not done the double ventilators before, but at this point now, I'm finding it quite easy, actually. So, when you all buy these kits off, Linny, not if, when... Pardon me. I expect you all to do these double ventilators. And I expect to see pictures of all these wonderful kits you've built. There, that's okay. Thought we'd lost the last one. I would not have been impressed. I would have been opening another kit to steal one out of that.
No, no, do double ventilators, everyone. They're really easy. No matter what Linny says. Good evening, Luke. Welcome to the stream. How are you today? That is also done with. We are scaringly close to the end. So, one carriage, doubled up ventilators. So I say, I've not done the doubled up ventilators before, but they have gone brilliantly. Again, I'm putting that down to the design of the kit. I, I am very well, thank you, Luke, considering everything. I'm glad you are well. That's fine. I'm quite happy to see your pictures of your elves and orcs and other such things, Christopher. You, you even did some of them on stream the other day. It was interesting seeing them. I've not... I've never done the whole Warhammer thing, so seeing it was quite interesting. I enjoyed seeing it. You sink your teeth into a mighty car mods video. Yep, yeah, I can see that actually, Linny. Thank you. That's actually, as you've said it there, it's popped up on the screen on my telly. Let's see if I can sort that. Because the, the glue is now well and truly dry. I think it is actually just the top lamination of the card has come off. Uh, it, it, it's just the top lamination that's come off, then it's not the whole thing. So, it is okay. So I'm sure you all spotted what was wrong, and now it is fine-ish. It did not take much. Yes, as Linny says, when building these kits, let them dry properly. You are not live on YouTube, you do not need... To rush through things. My first one of these I took a good few hours on each part letting it dry making sure it was completely hard before moving on to the next bit. No giggling at the back was still PG. Oh, Luke, I need pictures of this if you have bought yourself a new layout. I need pictures. Go and spam the Twitter chat with them, please. Oh, I need these pictures. I will have a look at them later if you do. Just going to give this a bit more of a tease. It's almost straight now. This teasing it out is working. Yes, exactly, Linny. At this point, you let it dry properly before painting. And in fact, when painting these, you do not ever just paint straight onto this. The card is very, very absorbent, so you always prime. Either acrylic spray primer, shellac, anything like that. Just get it primed, get it sealed, otherwise your paint is just going to keep sinking into it. Um, 
that gets expensive. So you definitely don't want to be doing that. That there's some that that that's you know as Alex says, Luke, excuses. What we can do is put the roof on. Right, hang on Tom, just for that. And here's one I made earlier. It's lovely. It has a break end on it. This is one of the more complicated kits, it's the first one I made. Luke, I generally don't I gen generally don't use primer. I, I will admit that on here right now to everyone. I have no issues with not using primer. I do need to glaze it. But I can't glaze it till after I paint it. Or at least until after I've primed it. Cause what I will do with this, now that, you know, whilst we've got some good weather, I'm hoping we still got good weather tomorrow, I will take this kit, along with this kit, outside and get them primed. So next week we will be able to paint them. I have some mahogany paint to paint them with. My god, I've just seen how far back my lag is on this, that's quite bad. So yes, hopefully next next week we'll get these painted. They will be primed up. M my plan, Linny, as you get into the don't fix it yet about the roof, was to glaze it from underneath. I've got the glue and glaze. I was going to stick some of that in and put it up there. I wasn't going to fix it to the chassis yet. I was just going to fix the roof on which I think I should be able to do. If you're telling me not to do it, I won't do it. In fact, that is why I haven't put the roof on this one, being completely honest. You would think it sounds like a good thing for your airbrush to do, Luke. It's set for, I have primer in a rattle can, so no, it wouldn't. Because you could do that if you don't fit the... Yeah, that was the plan, Linny, was not to fit the body to the chassis till afterwards. Yeah. So, okay, we agree it can work. Thank you. Yes. I was not planning on actually fixing to the chassis yet. I'm just trying to get the chassis teased back to being straight. I'm not sure I'm going to manage it this evening. It's very, very close, but it might need a bit longer. The roof in white card. Yes, I know you did. I, I've seen your ones. And it does look very good, even with a white card roof. But no, um, but like, but my hope for this evening was getting the roof on. And I've actually got the ventilators sitting here off camera to fit as well. Which I have never done. You know, what's glue and glaze? Glue and glaze is deluxe materials for doing glazing. It is, it's a very thick... PVA style glue which can in fact be teased out across holes to form the windows itself rather than actually using it. I prefer using it just as a glue to set the acetate in place. It's completely clear drying. There is so you get no residue on it whatsoever. So it is, it is in fact clearer than PVA, but it is just 
a very thick PVA style glue. Yes, just like canopy glue. It's exactly the same sort of idea. Possibly even the same stuff, just from a different company. Hydration time again. Remember kids, stay hydrated. It is very warm here in Hicktown today. Oh no, we're bubbling over the top. That's why I have a coaster, it's fine. You too should also use coasters for your drinks. Life advice from Gary. Wow, I can't believe how laggy I am. I really can't believe how far this is lagging behind. So, back to the roof. But to give an idea of how far lagging behind this, as I'm saying this, I'm just watching me put glue and glaze on my finger. That's where the lag is in comparison to me talking. So I'm just going to curve the roof slightly. I'm going to use my former as I did for the sides of the carriage to get a curve on here. Of course I definitely don't want it to bend nearly as much as the former because that's way too much. But there we have it sitting not quite to the roof line yet, but it's getting close. I am not sponsored. Never sponsored, Tom. The fact I might use a few kits from people who visit the stream, naming no names, is completely coincidental. Oh yes, I've used, I've used glue that's like that, Alex. In fact, this t-shirt I'm wearing now has a hole in it from glue burning through it. You'll sponsor me, will you, Luke? I, I, I mean, I don't sell out cheap. So there we have the roof now taking the shape of the carriage, which is nice because once it's at this point I can put the PVA across the tops and just hold it down and it will, it won't take long at all for it to set in shape. conversation happen with you guys before I see my contribution happen on there. So Linny, I'm going to ask this now because you may have noticed this doesn't have a roof on it yet, which means I haven't done this yet. This 
is going to be a first for me. Holes in the roof for the ventilators. Or do you cut the tails off the ventilators and stick them straight to the roof? There, that's that's what I thought. Thank you, Linny, for confirming. Much appreciated. Yep, a little bit of super glue, that was the plan. In fact, you wrote that in the instructions very nicely for us. So we add to the roof, we're halfway through the stream and we're basically done. We are going to have to start another project. This is how good this kit is. I think if I did a speed build on one of these kits, I could modify the chassis appropriately for my free links, get it built, get the body built, and have, have the whole thing done from scratch in one stream. It's all cardian. The whole kit is card, except for the chassis, which is MDF. The chassis were originally also card, but Linny found them not to be strong enough. Build another one. Well, we've got a choice, everyone, on what I do next. Here are our ventilators. So, for a five compartment coach and carriage, always carriage on the Brighton. Mm -hmm. Lamps, I said ventilator again, didn't I? We need five of them. One, two, three, four. No, no, we don't. Yes, we do, by the time I am. Originally, I don't think they would have had this many, but, but later on they would have, because the dividers were full height. Build a whole rake. <laughs> Now, you say that, Alex. I do have a whole rake. <laughs> but I, I reckon I could build one of these from start to finish on a single stream. 
That sounds like an interesting challenge. Maybe we should try that at some point. Put them back in the linen kit drawer. Yeah, that's what I thought. Originally they would have had three because they would have been one. They would have been sat between the compartments. Yeah. But as I was saying, we do actually have a choice. Let me just come away a second. I, I could start working on another one of these kits. That is not a problem. Or... I could start work on what was planned to be the next project of turning one of these old Triang 7 planks into one of these a Brighton 5 plank class A open wagon quite a transformation I'm sure you'll agree. Those came out of the same toolings. <laughs> so that is an option. And whilst you debate that, well, you know, whilst the lag catches up so you can debate that, I'm going to chop the bottom off these lamps. Oh, I thought Sam would have been curious about that, Alex. Oh. I have um, lost the lamp onto my chair. Two lamps in a five compartment, Ian. So it looks like the votes are coming in for the um, wagon conversion. Quite happy to do the wagon conversion. Okay, Lily, have fun with whatever it is you're doing. That one's going to need some filing down. Uh, LBSC still, Ian. All my modelling is very firmly pre grouping. Yes, Alex, 1900-1905-ish. Although there is a chance they'll get turned out on Hailsham, which is 1912. I don't know how many, if these would have been in, still in use then. I believe they would have been. Um, good lady Alex, 
if we are going to work on this triangle wagon conversion and young Sam wanted to know how, would you care to drop him a message and let him know we're going to be working on this if he is available to come and watch? Um, off the top of my head, Ian, I don't know. The book is far enough away and the info well hidden enough that I'm not going to look it up whilst I'm streaming. Which is probably what would stop them getting onto Hailsham. Because, of course, Hailsham is supposed to be an exhibition layout, so when stuff for that is done, it will all be correct. Thank you, Alex. Much appreciated for dropping him a message. And yes, I imagine you are probably the latest pre-grouper. 1905-ish seems to be where most pre-groupers on RM web sit. Although obviously my narrow gauge line is 1915, so that's catching up with you. Right then, super glue for the first time this evening. This is now getting nearly as bad as the last one for coming out the pots. So it may be that I actually have to go and buy some more in the near future. Ooh, pre-1900, very nice. I have certainly been tempted by Victorian era stuff in the past. Well, hey, well done, Harry. What have you won? Obviously by eye probably isn't the best way of doing this. Good evening Stephen, welcome. You're um You're gonna have to watch the stream back, I'm afraid, Stephen, because we're basically at the end you know Linny built these kits so well. Well, Linny designed these kits so well that any numpty can build them, myself included. And we're basically done. 
Yes, Killian, hence Bright Helmstone. Set in the 1870s. What I need is some nice locos to go with it. Which I believe Ian has kits for appropriate period locos. I must say I've been looking more looking at the website more and more recently. Until a large expense on Monday put an end to that. A very sad but necessary expense. Hello Sam, welcome. You join us just in time. Ah, oh, Backman J72. Not a bad loco at all. You should definitely go 1890s by the way, Sam. Go. 1905, it's a wonderful period, Stephen. So here we have a body finished. So, yes, Stephen, you'll have to go back in time through the stream at some point to see the construction. Because there we have one LBSC Stroudley Diagram 44 5 compartment third. Very, very free rolling and clearly my workbench has some lean on it. Ah, oh, right, since since Mr. Sem is deaf to the stream, I'm just gonna type a hello message. Right, now let's catch up with what you're all saying whilst I was typing that. Yes, Stephen, I am very happy with how that's come out. Again, all credit to Linny for how well this kit has gone together. I hope you enjoy watching it back. Thank you, Alex. I'm glad you enjoyed. Yeah. Thank you, Ian. I am glad you have enjoyed being here. We are obviously now going to start on the next project once I have caught up with what everyone is saying. Great Eastern, blue, yes. Great Eastern, great company, great livery. So, 
trying seven plank into a Brighton five plank open. Hydration is important. I'm going to put that one there to remind me on the things I did because I did, of course, have the wagon book in front of me when I did the last one. Um, as I don't want copyright strikes from YouTube, I'm not willing to put the book in front of me open on the table now so I will not actually have the drawings because I don't have them printed for this because obviously I wasn't planning on working on it yet uh, and this is what I was taking the blue paint off that was on the desk earlier and so first thing we need to do is remove the weight because of course free links will be used and we also need to remove the couplings and in fact I have already changed the wheels in this into I believe Batman split spokes. Good night Ian I'm glad you've enjoyed being here and I hope you will be able to drop by again soon. Excellent I will be I will go and have a look at your blog in the morning Ian thank you for coming so yes first things first let's remove these horrible triangle couplings I'm going to use the saw hopefully this shouldn't be too loud the neighbours won't complain too much Because, of course, we do have to get through triangles, rivets that they put in these. But with a decent razor saw, it's not that much work. Um, which page to turn to? So I can't remember page number, but it is the A-Class Open. There's a nice draw. In fact, the drawing is of number 9421. Stephen. So it is in there, open wagons. I believe it's quite early in the book. And in fact, I have some pictures I took of this as I was building it in, with the book open behind, and it is almost perfect to scale. I did see you'd bought those books, I'm thinking. You know, you're definitely coming over to the right side now. Don't need the Midland. Push the rest of the rivet out. Figure 4, page 15. I know it was quite early on. <laughs> Don't litter on too much, Mr. Sim, please. So with the rest of that out of the way, I'm just going to chop these down a bit more. This whole section will be coming out, it just makes it easier for me to work on later. Most people probably won't bother with that bit. <laughs> Midland wagons in every good yards photo, indeed. In fact, Stephen, I have stored on my laptop some photos of Hailsham Goods Yard, which was for my exhibition layout, 
and there are no Midland wagons in the photo. Lots and lots of other wagons, but no D299s anywhere. Thank, th thank you, Lady Alex. Much appreciated that you're listening when some can't or won't. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this properly because although I can copy the measurements off there, you lot can't. So I'm going to remind you how we measure these. In fact, I'm going to measure it that way up because I believe that's how I did the last one. So we want to get our backwards point the back of the coupling so we line the coupling up there just gonna put a couple put a nick in there and do that again to make sure yes that's plenty far enough back so I will do the same on the other side I will double check it again because you can't check too much. Yep, brilliant. This thing with your eyes. I'm just going to cut through that, which again, this, this triane plastic isn't too bad for cutting through. And now I'm going to measure long ways to see that just fits in either side of these pins that hold up or oh, held in the weight originally and kept that in position of course I can't see those from underneath so I do need to get that cut mark in because this cut definitely needs to be made with the wagon facing this way otherwise it will just snap In fact, it already has Bye bye chassis. This is because I'm using a blunt knife blade. I actually don't have any others that I'm able to get at at the minute. And this is also why I cut down that mounting point earlier to make it thinner to chop through here. That is as cut as we want to get that. We will clean it up with the file in a little while. And we will do the same to this side. I have every intention of sending you those photos, Luke. Do not worry. I just happened to um, fall asleep once I did finally get in earlier and not wait up till about 20 minutes before the stream so Box Hill has the wheels off the SEC how does Box Hill have Wadden's wheels? Wadden still exists does Wadden not have Wadden's wheels? Yes, there was huge numbers of these for a southern company. 
Which is why I, one of the reasons I needed them. Because no Brighton layout would be correct without them. I would say they're the Brighton equivalent of the D299, but they're nowhere near that numerous. Just going to remove these pips here. Because the coupling on this side was completely intact. Something very strange for at least my triangle wagons. So we already know this fits just between these pips here because they're the same on both sides. Fort Wheels Brighton Lights Terrier in 1949. Yes, Killian, uh, Wadden over in Canada is. XSECR751. So it just seems odd that its wheels would be on Box Hill. Because obviously it needs its wheels. Or so I've heard. Right, I don't know if you can, no, you can't see where I am now, so let's try doing it there. I'm going to cut down the inside there, as I intended to do with the other side, but because of it snapping, it wasn't really an option. Good night, Alex. Thank you for coming out. Totally understand if you have to go. I shall speak to you at some point tomorrow, providing you're well enough. stubborn today there we go so that's the holes cut they had two Luke um I'd love to answer Sam but he's a bit busy not listening to me so I'll let someone else cover that Someone with the book open in front of them, maybe. Cough, cough, hint, hint, Stephen. I believe some did last into SR ownership with the round ends. So, the body. The important bit. Back to the saw for that. So you can see here, I technically only have four planks because that is the correct height with these. One, two, three, four gives us the right height, chopping off the top three planks of this. Now, all I did last time, initially, was to make a score mark across there. Again, being triangle plastic, generally 
quite amenable to being chopped up. Oh, I assumed you were, Luke, and that's why you wanted the pictures. And as I say, I have them. I will send them to you tomorrow. I have not had a chance to do it because I fell asleep. I, I, I'm going to tell you this as a fact. Stephen has drawings, so could confirm. The curves on the sides didn't reach all the way out, and they started inside the actual planks for the sides. So for the purpose of these... You can indeed just cut down the side there to the correct depth. The correct depth which I have marked by scoring in the edges. That's why I did that first. This one hasn't scored very well, so I'm just going to do that there, and I can see that better now. So then, with those already cut down the inside, it is much easier to just cut down through here. And remove the side, we are nearly there. Yes, the drawing in the book is indeed still under frame. As far as I'm aware, the bodies were identical though, and it was only the under frames changed between those two diagrams. I, in fact, built that one and covered the sides to make it a wooden under frame before actually noticing that it was a steel under frame drawing. I would have built it as. I would have left the steel under frame alone on the other one had I have noticed and in fact I will leave it as steel on this one. Um, I don't have any Oxford 7 planks to try to answer Sen's question. I don't know how well they go up to this. If someone else has an answer for him, please do answer him. If not, kind of shrug at him. I don't know, Sen, maybe. What I can say is that trying ones work. Although not so much when you do what I do and slip twice in the wrong direction.
gone all the way through at this side but not on the other. This of course is the problem of trying wagons is they can have a bit of a warp to them. There we go. Tops off, I'm just going to clean that off with the file. Well, there goes that glass. That was silly, wasn't it? We now have coke and bits of glass all over the floor. Whoops. Won't be doing that again in a hurry. That, of course, is the downside of keeping your glass under the workbench. Never mind. It's only a glass. I can't even remember what I was reaching over to grab now. pick up the biggest the bigger bits that I can get to and then we shall continue worse things have happened I am I'm just going to take these bits of broken glass out to the kitchen and grab a tea towel to chuck down on and I will be and I will be back to carry on with building a wagon which is much more interesting bring myself a slightly less expensive glass. because hydration is important. You'll be glad to know that was the sound of it spilling everywhere. So that went well. Where were we? Let's catch up with the chat quickly. Yeah, yes, yes, Luke, that was one of the twenty pound glasses. Yes. Yes. Set of four crystal art crystal glasses, eighty quid. That was one of them. 
just gone off the coffee table there. I really shouldn't use things that expensive for stuff like this. Never mind, let's carry on. I've got two more. So the next thing we need to lose is the verticals and we're going to lose the middle of the door there and that will get that will get replaced by a full length one so this is nice and easy to shave off You're just taking your time with the knife take a couple of goes over to get it all off Yes, the um, the chat and volume's good, isn't it, Stephen? <laughs> PG stream, ladies and gentlemen. PG stream. a sharp everyone. Please bear this in mind when using it to cut. <laughs> Crystal drinking glasses, one ninety nine for free. Yeah, yeah. My, mine were um, my, mine were designer brand Crystal glasses, Harry. Very very posh ones, but they were bought with a voucher that I'd got, and you know. People buy me vouchers for things for the house for Christmas and stuff, but I mean, I've lived here, you know, I moved out of my mum's, what, 12 years ago? I've got everything I need, so generally those sorts of vouchers go on expensive rubbish, like £20 crystal glasses. I'm glad you're enjoying the books, Stephen. As we discussed last week, I rather enjoy the Midland as well. I'm rather envious of your wagon building at times. Because of course I have I barely have a wagon fleet. We are now still just cutting off 
the diagonal bracing. The Brighton wagons didn't have these. And we'll have to work to re-etch the planking back into these when we are done. And I will show you how we do that on triang wagons after. Yes, so there, there is a lot of other stuff in the Brighton volume, isn't there, Stephen? Yes. I thought you might enjoy those bits with second-hand Midland stuff. Well, I... Okay, yes, I don't have much of a wagon fleet because I'm modelling the Brighton. I mean, if we want to look at what bro what actual accurate Brighton wagons I have. I have two brake vans and this wagon. I've got a couple of private owners that are far from accurate and I would certainly never want to pull out at an exhibition. I did intend on making a lot of wagons, like in fact making the entire fleet of what I would need last year. I made none, so that went well. Do you use a panel scribing tool to redo the planks? No, 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 Luke, I use my knife. And the Linton and Barnstable, yes, the Linton and Barnstable. Um, I have some Linton and Barnstable wagons for the narrow gauge. So, there's that. Right, so, knife can sit down in the planks and run along them. After going along them a few times, you don't get much, but you do get enough. So, yeah, you don't get much. Focus, please, camera. You get so little, the camera won't even focus on it, and you can't see it. Camera. Focus, focus. Let's try again. There we go. So you can't actually see it. But there is enough there that the knife on its back will run straight through that. And I will run the full length of the plank with the back of the knife a few times through the score mark that I have made with the front of it. Just gonna run that through each one one more time. And then just clean out these ends. And so then, focus. I 
wonder if I can force Streamlabs into... No, I can't force Streamlabs into a focus. Of course not. There we go. We have planking. Simple as that. Oh, oh, Harry, I won't be taking a layout to the Uckfield show, Harry. I, as a member of the Uckfield club, will be stewarding. I will, you know, I'll be checking tickets. I'll be probably selling tickets on the door at some point. I will fill in for operators on layouts where needed. I normally manage to get myself parked behind quite a nice layout. I've got a very nice narrow gauge one to play with last year. That was great. So I will be there constantly throughout the whole show, but I won't actually have my own layout with me. I'm also going to just put these planks back in, because this wagon used to be painted a very horrible blue livery, and the blue paint is all kind of bunged up in here. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me, but that'll definitely be later on in the Brighton and Southern days that you'll have seen goods trains with no actual Southern vehicles in. I imagine the Midland had more D299s than the Southern had wagons at some points. What happened to chat on screen, Luke? It doesn't work. It's supposed to be there. Actually, nothing has happened to it. And in fact, it sh when I come to show you something on the camera, obviously I have to, to make sure it's focused, I have to have a look at the screen. And when I look at the screen, the chat is there on my phone screen that is running the stream but for some reason it doesn't actually come through to YouTube I don't know why it's rather irritating because I wanted it there so that everyone could see what I could see when I'm seeing it and it makes my responses a bit more understandable Oh, hello, Linny. Welcome back. And so we can see now all the planks are scribed. Yes, Harry, hopefully I will see you to sell you your ticket. That would be great. So I really hope you can make it. Um, you know, you be when you get there, literally to go talk to any member of the Uckfield Club and say, "Where's Gary?" and they'll find me for you. And so it would be great to meet you. If you are down. Yes, Luke, everyone gets invited to exhibitions. And without wanting to be I don't even think what the word is. But you know, well, I'm not trying to boast here. Uckfield is a very good show. You need very good layouts to get into Uckfield. Certainly, despite the praise I get from people, 
uh, Oak Hill, if it was an exhibition layout, would never get invited to Upfield Show. It's not good enough. Yeah, so, so, so the Midland just had a couple more D299s and the Southern had wagons. Looking good already. Thank you, Linny. Yes, Buckfield Show is October, Stephen. The third weekend of October, so it'll be around the 20th. If I can't think what the dates are off the top of my head. I've got a feeling... It's the 21st and 22nd this year, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Yes, Lee, as I, there is a date, third weekend of October. Always the third weekend of October. Scrape some of that blue paint out. It really was not an attractive livery. Oops, that went a bit far, that's okay, we can fix that. Everything can be fixed, except for my glass. My poor, poor glass. That will just go in the bin. Now, these wagons... The triangle one, so the triangle ones of these. So focus camera. You can see the planking kind of. But the triangle ones have two sets of rivets down here and one down the end. The actual Brighton ones only had the one set. I'm not sure you'll be able to see on there with how it's... So I just remove one of the sets of rivets, which in this case is the outside set of rivets. I did compare that to the drawing to know that was the ones to remove. I'm not saying that at all, Luke. I am saying whatever layout you want to get exhibited there needs to be built to a very, very high standard. I'm not saying one of your layouts wouldn't go there. At all. It is a good thing to, in, to aspire to. Excellent, that's good to hear Stephen. I would love for you to be able to make it down and actually get a chance to meet you. That would be absolutely wonderful. So no finding other commitments in the meantime. Rivet counting, see? <laughs> no, I wouldn't call it rivet counting, but I mean, silk's first from the sales here. Yeah, I can't argue with that. I need to hydrate a bit more. So that shall be done. Not 
talked over the prefix on the end. The rivets on the end get left alone. <coughs> this is where you can tell I wasn't prepared. I'm going to take this set of... Oh, hello, Mr. Spider. You probably don't want to be on the workbench. It's not a safe place for you to be running around. I'm just going to cut the end off these instructions because I need a sheet of paper. I'm just going to put the file on that because it's not going to lay nicely across it otherwise. What we're going to do here is use the paper and size it correctly to the end of the wagon. Oh, hello, Christopher. I thought you'd run away or fallen asleep again. So, with that cut to the end, the size of the end of the wagon, I can then draw my semicircle on there. And again, doing this the other day, I had the drawings of the wagon in front of me, which made this quite easy, because I could trace over them. This week, doing it today, not so much. So, I'm going to find the centre with the ruler. Okay, yes, yes, okay, with it counting, actual with it counting, yes. I suppose it technically, I, I've not counted there the right number of rivets though, Stephen. I have just made sure it's the right number of rows of rivets. So with the centre marked, all I need to do... is put my semicircle out to here. Now one of these will come out one of these sides will come out better than the other. And they certainly won't both come out the same. Let's compare to this to see. I think I know which one's the better one. It's almost a perfect match for that. So what do we do? We fold it in half. I think it's blooming brilliant that they're doing it, Stephen. I was very impressed mm -hmm. seeing that. I am looking forward to more similar prototypes coming. And thank you for bringing it up. It is an interesting line for the discussion to take. So, yeah, folded in half, followed the line of the better drawn curve, which, as you can see, is quite different from the worst drawn curve. And back to our good old friend, double-sided tape. That's not how you're supposed to work, double-sided tape. The sticky bit's supposed to come up with you at this point. But yes, I do have to agree with Sam. It is rather expensive, but that will obviously be because it's limited runs and limited profitability. I 
don't blame them for that in the slightest. It would be nice to see it cheaper, but there we go. Very nice wagon. I will get some. So now we have semicircle and it's sticky. Yeah, um, I still think the birdcage sets were expensive. I'm, I'm not typing back to Sam who can't hear me, but I do think they were expensive. But I think they were worth the expense. So now. I can stick that down where it goes in here. I'm going to take the saw again and cut off most of the excess. I will then finish up the curve with a file. I think I actually used the, the big file on this the other day, and I think I'm going to do the same again. talking going on well, I'm just gonna take my knife blade to clean up these edges quickly whilst discussions of SECR wagons go on and whether they should be so expensive. I'd love to see them cheaper but they're not mass produced and it looks very nice. I, as I say I will definitely be getting some. You know, regardless of what anyone says, it's spent. It's more expensive than most ready-to-run wagons because it is an experiment. It's a limited run because they don't think it would sell well. People want the price of these things to come down. Go out and buy lots of them and prove to them that they will sell. In the meantime, we have a round end. Just the one, for now. But we shall get the knife blade in underneath this. Lift it with its tape. And stick it into the other side. Again, another good thing with these triangle wagons for doing this is they do have the planking marked on the inside all across that way 
so you can actually see where you need to stick this and make sure it is lined up properly. Yes, I have to say, when buying kits and stuff, I do actually factor in f how much fun I will have into the, or how much fun I expect to have into the price. Because, of course, I am the sort of masochist that enjoys doing stuff like this. So, Building kits is fun. There are you know take four it, actually no that's not a good example. Trying to think of something I paid more for in kit form than I could have done otherwise. And there is plenty of it about. I have actually paid more for things than I would have had to have spent otherwise. Because I enjoy doing this. Although there, I do understand Mr. Sem's point. He's often in a different financial situation to myself and has to worry about that more. interest does anyone know what type of plastic Tryang used for these because this smells just like working with the acrylic back at school doesn't feel like it but it smells like it Peel this off, give it a bit of a tidy up, and we've got the basics of the body done. So they're not perfect, but come on, focus. We have a round ended wagon. So I say that is the basics of the body complete. We can park it next to that one. It's not perfect, but who knows. Uh, who cares? That's what I mean. Not who knows. It's getting late. We've only got 10 minutes left. So. Next step. I'm, I'm going to go back to the chassis. Because there's something I forgot to do earlier that I should have done. 
We've got a tie bar all the way across the bottom there that we do not want. We're going to take that off. And we're going to cut onto the MDF of the workbench rather than the glass. And we're going to snap the brake gear slightly. But it's okay because we're going to pretend we didn't. And then no one will know. If you don't tell anyone I cut the bottom off the brake gear, I won't either. So just removing that tie bar brings it back in time a bit. I did just put it down in the wet spot of super glue, didn't I? There we go, we did not on that side. Usual test, end planking, if it's still straight, it's polystyrene. It's bent warped, it's cellulose acetate. Uh, I mean, all the planking is generally quite straight. The sides are warped inwards slightly on this one, which I don't think they were on that one. They're out of the same moulding though, they've got the same text and stuff on the underside. But yeah, these ones are slightly warped inwards. Whereas everything else is fine with it. Right. What can we look at next? I'm going to have to grab my bag of... Plastics and brasses. Um, we're going to want a little bit of brass and we're going to do the bits for around the door because I do need the drawings for where I want the plastic. So we'll just grab a couple of small bits of brass. Never throw anything away, me. Stephen, yes. Yes, it will indeed be the same. I have a red one of these as well. And I also have one with opening doors, but I don't want to chop that one up because the doors are taller than the sides here. Forty five P. Well, I'll tell you what, that's what would have been paid for this because the, most of these wagons are ones I got as hand me downs. So I'm just going to line this up with one of these to get a rough idea on the 
size we want. I'll add a small, just make a small snip in the end there to make sure. No, that's too wide, so I'll make another one. Yeah, that's the, how thick we want it. So I'm just going to cut a strip of that. This will, of course, bend because we're cutting it so fine. That's not an issue. We can straighten it out. So I'll just straighten that out with my fingers. It's not as sharp as you'd expect. I'm sure most of the people here now know that. So this needs to be a full length strip down the middle of the door. I'm going to put it where it needs to be. Get the scissors. Of course, the problem is these scissors aren't sharp at the end anymore, so they don't cut very well. But there we have our strip for the centre of the door. Theoretically, I should put some bolts in that. £5.35, yeah I don't think I've ever paid that much for a Triang wagon. I certainly wouldn't be willing to pay much more than that for a Triang wagon. I think I've kept all my Triang wagon purchases below a fiver. Because of course way back in time, before I was a Brighton modeler, I did buy lots of things like this. That are completely useless to me now until one day I look at them and say oh I wonder if I could make that into a Brighton version of whatever I actually have another idea from flicking through the Brighton wagon book so there may be more Triangle conversions in the future. Now I'm just going to give this a squeeze with the pliers. It's actually still slightly long, but that's fine. We'll be able to sort that once it's dry. So that gives us the centre of the door. Focus, camera, focus. The centre of the door. Uh, no, can confirm, links are currently blocked. You should, it should let you paste them in and then ask for a moderator to approve them. But certainly when you tried the other day, I got no, no, no message asking me to approve your link, Linny. So, just no links are broken. So we're just doing the same to the other side now.
Of course it would go off at an angle then. Of course it would. It's almost like it knew I couldn't see it. Uh, yes, I have done cattle wagons from the mainline LMS ones in the past, Stephen. In fact, I exclusively use those mainline cattle wagons now because they're so close to Brighton ones as to not matter. Um, the conversion I am thinking of doing, since you're accusing me of teasing, and yes, I am, I still have to play with the idea. In the permanent way section of the book, so you're going to want to turn quite close to the back, there are some bogey rail carrier wagons. Now I have, from a cheap eBay purchase years ago, some of these old Triang wagons, and they're very, very close in length. This one here has the old metal bogies, so they will need to come off completely. But my other one of these I have has plastic ones that I think I might be able to modify. So my aim is to look at doing that. I'm going to do one off camera first, see how well I can do it. And if it works, we'll do another on, one on camera. Since I have the two, I will probably buy some Cambrian bogies to do them with. So, yes, there could be something along those lines in the future, depending on how well my off-camera one goes. I think it's doable. Right, um, on that note, everyone, I make it midnight. Which is, of course, time for the stream to end. And I think we've reached a good point to end the stream here. As I will need the drawings for the next bit. For make making these semicircles on the end. Which obviously is an issue right now. So... We'll be back to finish this wagon next week, and I'm going to have to come up with another project to go. If anyone has any ideas, you know, Twitter, Instagram, RM Web, I could be contacted on all of them. If there's anything you'd like to see me do, let me know. Links to Twitter and Instagram are down below. So, thank you very much for coming, everyone. And, good night.